Hi everyone, so today I have this beautiful set that Dye Impress has brought to HSN ahead of the March 5th um, craft day. It is a springtime banners, really lovely and just different focal points that have like sentiments in them. So let me open this up. But they did send this item free of charge for my review and of course all opinions are my own. And any links in the description box will be affiliate links, which means I'll make a small commission if you are purchased items through those links. So thank you for using those if you would like to. With HSN, possibly it could be that there's a little tiny shopping bag right here that you can click on that'll take you over also. Yeah, so hopefully you can see it's like a larger kind of like badge <laughs> and then with the beautiful flowers and then your sentiment is mixed in there with it. So let's open this up and take a peek. So depending when you're watching, as I've stated before, um, some of these new sets are coming with uh, some of Dime Press's new sticky sheets. And people ask if these are available separately. They are available separately at mydimepress.com. So not at HSN, at least not right now, but on mydimepress.com they do have several sheets, like a bundle of however many sheets, different sizes. And you can always use my code VCDP10 for 10% off your order. But I'll have that information in the description box. But it does come with these two. Um, I'm not really giving you a sizing on these guys, but they're like four and a quarter by six and a quarter ish, is what I'm seeing. Um, and again, when you have a die cut, all you're going to do is place the die towards the little gray dots, the back of your die cut, and then just kind of give it a squish. So when you pick it up, the gray dots will be transferred to the back of your die cut, and then that die cut is ready to go, right, to use it on a project. So you have two sheets of those, you have the card that helps you do that, and you also have the instruction sheet for those things. Um, this set also comes with the cutting folder for the marquee. If you don't have a marquee, no worries, just, you know, put it to the side, maybe gift it if you know someone who does have a marquee. Um, but these dies will go through any machine that cut thin metal dies, so... Uh, you can definitely do that. It doesn't have to be a marquee machine. And let's look at the inspo sheet before we move on. Um, yeah, so they're showing you like the little daffodils maybe stamped in yellow, and then uh, it says stamp sentiment in banner. Um, this one has a beautiful like like cherry blossoms in my opinion, but you know something pretty like that. Beautiful friend. Um, really pretty little flowers here. Look more like wildflowers. Thanks a bunch. And then down here, the strawberries. Oh my gosh, that is so cute. And this one, you can do like very sweet, you know, however you want to mix and match those. And then they have a die for them. So it's going to be a nice focal, like centerpiece, and then everything else. You have a dragonfly, a butterfly, a little ladybug that is adorable, the bee, a little posy there. You're on my mind, beautiful friend. Have a lovely day, very sweet. Thanks a bunch. And then some other kind of silhouette die cuts. Um, you have like a little square, like almost postage looking. So then you have the outside one that's like postage, a little sprig, and a leaf. And then you can see here where you might want to decorate with some of the other items. Super cute. Oh my gosh. So these are the guys. Let me give you a quick kind of measurement so you have an idea. Because obviously I'm not going to use all of them today, but so you have an idea about how big these guys are. Let's say that's like three and a half inches tall. That one's about, they're about three and a half inches, you know. Uh, this one's like three and a quarter inches wide. They're going to have different widths, almost three inches wide on that one. The flowers are good size. And you can see everything else there. So, um, oh, let's check out these pretty things. Look how pretty. I love the colors on this carrier. Very spring and fun. So let me grab a card base and some different items and um, we'll get started. I'll be right back. Okay, guys, I had mentioned in my review video of the airbrush tool that I'll use the tool um, to make backgrounds and maybe we'll just get right to it. So for this video, I'm just going to actually use it right now. I have this trellis um, stencil. I was trying to think of what package this came from. It might have been from a floral bundle. Either way, I'll link it um, in the description box. Um, people did ask in that last video if you can use any stencils. Of course. I mean, you know, the airbrush kit came with some stencils, but whatever you have in your stash will be great. This stuff is very low, low, low profile tackiness, but I'm going to use it anyway. And so I'm just going to pop in one of the refill colors. I want to go with this light blue with that trellis. And let me get myself a scrap of... Um, I'm going to push that in, but not completely, because I showed you guys a little trick to get it going. And knowing you're hitting the right spot for it to atomize, or whatever you want to call it, um, in the best way. So I'm just going to start pressing it and pushing this in at the same time. And as soon as I see the color spraying, then I'll stop right there. That looks good. And 
yeah, I'm just going to start. I was going to do kind of like a circle area, but I think I'm just going to fill it in in a fun way. So I'll just start like up here. And, you know, if you hold it in one area more, I'm doing very, very light here. But you can get it to be darker. Like, let's say I want to kind of make it darker in this area. I'm just going to go around that a little more than the rest. And get a little more out here. Okay. And I'll put this guy away. And, you know, just to clean this out, you might have some ink on the tip there. I'll just kind of let that soak up. You can also press the air button. And if there's anything in there, it'll start kind of flying out. And there's that. Just like an airbrush background. Really simple. I'll show it to you in just a second, but I'm going to wash this off and I'll be right back. Okay. So there it is. And it should be pretty much dry. It's just water-based marker. You can definitely rinse it off. Um, and there's that. So I'm going to use that for my background. So I'm just going to go ahead and just glue this down here. And this was cut down to 4 and 8 by 5 and 3 eighths. So that's what I did. That's the kind of matte layer I like, but if you like four by five and a quarter or just the whole thing, four and a quarter by five and a half, definitely go for that. Okay, so that's a cute background for whatever it is I decide to stamp. Um, I do have some watercolor paper here because I think what I'm going to, going to do is um, just color in our image with maybe even the same water-based markers these guys. We can definitely do that. So, or, you know, the ones that the kit first came with. So I'm going to pop this back in here. And I think that's what I'll do, so that'll be good. So let's choose one of these guys. Should we go with daffodils? Yeah, yellow and blue, I think that'll be pretty, but I'm going to stamp it in black um, ink to begin with. So let me get a stamp positioner. I need my little, this guy, because I'm going to heat emboss, the heat set that. You don't have to, if I'm using like versifying something where um, it's made to work with watercolor you don't have to heat set it but um, I'm gonna heat set it just because it looks nicer and all that so let me grab those things I'll be right back. okay so I have my watercolor paper down here my stamp I just kind of held that down I'm going to use oh you know what let's not use this one let's use this other one Sometimes that one dries a little bit faster than just regular versifying so that's what I want uh, if you're going to color in with alcohol ink markers, you know, any of your diamond press inks will be great. They're water-based, so they work with alcohol ink markers really well. But I'm going water on water, and you don't want to do that because then you'll smear. It'll reactivate, definitely. Oh my gosh, I got my embossing buddy, and I still forgot to use it, didn't I? That's okay. All right. And I think maybe I'll stamp the sentiment um, with a colored ink, so I'm just not going to do that right now. Okay, that looks pretty good. I can probably hit the center a little bit more. Just that very center bit looks like it could be a little bit darker. Ah. Well, if I had recalled to use my embossing buddy before you do any of the stamping, you just go over it. It's basically just like maybe cornstarch or some kind of powder that's in here um, that helps it so that your... Um, oh, you know what? I'm going to clean that off in a minute. Uh, your embossing powder doesn't stick to it. So anyhow, okay. It's really important if you're using a colored embossing powder. I'm using clear, but if you're using like black just to make it pop black on black, you really need it to be dry. Uh, let me grab a scrap of paper to go under this. And I'm just going to pour some clear embossing powder on this and then just heat set it with my heat tool. Okay. And since I didn't use my embossing buddy, I'm just going to give it a little firm little whack on the back and try to get the extra the excess off I guess there's a little bit there that I don't want there sometimes I'll take a brush if I can see it okay I'm gonna heat set that with a heat tool and I'll be right back okay, there is. and if you're super brand new you don't know what a heat tool is it looks like this it's just a heat tool <laughs> um, and I just like to put it on high and you're not blow drying it like your hair you're just kind of keeping it steady in one area once it turns shiny move to the next area okay just slowly kind of go around your whole project um, and then I always use an extra scrap of paper to do this on so I can kind of funnel it back I'm gonna let that set up for a little bit and we'll do our coloring and then I'll do my stamping of whatever it is that I want to stamp in there um, the sentiment and then we'll die cut it 
came in a little bit closer. And this is where you can use your marquee folder if you don't have a marquee. There's, uh, you can use it as palette or whatever you like. So um, let's say, okay, let's see, this guy. Let's take like this dark blue. And I'm just going to put a little bit of color. I mean, just put it down. You're not going to need too much. A water brush that's just going already. And I can get a little bit of this. And this is dry paper with wet, so wet on dry. But I can just kind of come in with a little bit of the color, maybe on this little edge, and just kind of bring it out. And again, for me, it's just adding color. There's no rhyme or reason here. I mean, I try to start where you think it would be darkest, you know, with the shadow. But I don't even like saying that because I don't want people to get nervous about it. So it's just <laughs> start wherever you think. If it's a flower, I usually start like in the center of the flower and go out. So just adding a little color like that. You know, that did a little something right. No big deal. If you want to wipe it off, you can wipe it off. With a water brush, honestly, you just put more water and it'll just go away. Um... Maybe around this edge we do like a little bit of yellow. I can get a smaller water brush, but most of the time I just keep with what I have. Um, oh, you know what? We want to use yellow for our flowers possibly. So let's do that separate. Um, maybe a little orange. I don't know. Because I might highlight some orange in here. So I'll get that. And I'm just going to come in here and just color it in. You know, kind of in a fun way. I'm not coloring all of it completely. That way you have that variation of color that looks a little more artsy. Get that guy in there. Start here and then just kind of bring that orange around. And I just ran out so I can just put a little more. And that's all I'm going to do. Just add a little color onto my palette here and bring it through. So I'll continue doing that with a little music for you guys. And I mean it's really not a big deal. Like the next thing I have is maybe the greenery. So we can bring that green back. Oh, that's so pretty. And put a little water. Get that a little lighter. And, you know, move your project. You don't have to keep it the same way. Ooh, hold on. It says emerald and it's very kind of bluish. Let me try to get that again. See if I can. Yeah, I just need it to be a little bit darker to get it more into the green. <laughs> Again, just right in there. And I'll just continue coloring super simply. And I'll be back. rinse this off again it's water based use it for another project and then we have this little guy ready to go uh, I'm going to go ahead and choose a sentiment to pop in there it might still be a little bit wet from the work I was just doing but I'm going to try to stick this back down hopefully again with uh, the work we've done you know heat setting water and all those kinds of things it really wants to warp the paper um, and let's get a sentiment going on here here are my mind, beautiful friend. Have a lovely day. Let's do have a lovely day. And I'm just going to place it here where I think it should go. And I mean, I could have done this with the black. I could have done it at the same time so that it's also heat set and all that kind of good stuff. But I think I'm just going to pop it right here. And I'm going to give my tape another squish when I'm ready. Uh, let me put these things to the side. And let's do, should we do orange or yellow? Let's do an orange color. And let's go with this creamsicle. I'm curious. It's pretty. Okay, I'm going to ink this up. I'm going to squish my tape one more time before I go for it. Put that guy on there. 
Aw, and have a lovely day with a little orange tone. And I'll just clean this up. And I will be right back. Okay, guys, so let's go ahead and bring over our die. And it looks like it's this one. Yay! All right. Oh, you know, I put a little blue, like, color in here just to kind of give it a background. If you want to take that same blue and go around the edges, that'd be really pretty. So when you cut it, you don't have, like, a white edge. It's just kind of softer blue edge. I really want this to be right on point, so I'm going to show you. Hopefully this will work out for me. A little trick here. Oh, you know what? I'm going to use this piece of paper because maybe I'll drop shadow it. I don't know. We'll see. Bring some of that yellow back. So I'm just going to take a scrap of paper. And I know when I did this in the live, and I've done this probably over a thousand times easily, uh, it kind of was a little bit off. So, you know, it happens. And I'm like, that's never happened to me. Like, even just in making videos here, you know, where I can edit it. Never. So, anyway. Um, find an area that would make it hinge easier. I think for me it might be here. And I'm just going to run this guy through. And I chose a color that I can drop shadow with, that way I don't waste it, but if you just have a scrap piece of paper, that's fine too. And this is just a way to make sure you're where you want to be with your cutting. I'm going to trim this down a little bit, just... Why not? So what you do is just leave it where it is, you hinge it up. You want to make sure it's cutting exactly where it was, so you don't want to remove it. Um, but I can kind of see through that and have a good view of what I'm doing, right? So I'm going to make sure that that is right back where it was. Put a little tape there. And you definitely want to tape it in a couple different spots. I don't usually recommend putting tape on your project when you've done, you know, foiling or different things. But with this one, I'm just going to do that. And hopefully it'll be all good. So I'm still holding it pretty tight here, I'm going to get it going. Sometimes things move when they go through the machine, but shouldn't move too, too much. And there we go, much better. <laughs> okay, let me clean up a little bit, we'll put it all Here's together. Base. Here's that piece we just cut. And then possibly a drop shadow, I don't know if it needs it. I mean, it looks nice and clean that way, but this also kind of helps it differentiate from the background, either there or like maybe here a little bit. Maybe here, huh? That looks good. Okay, so let's glue that together. We also have um, some really cute, um, like, silhouette dies, different things you can pop in the back. So maybe what I'll do is I'll go ahead and do this. And we wanted it kind of like this, I think is what I wanted. Right, coming out the bottom. That looks nice. So it's kind of up and then to the left. Um, let me take the little sprigs, these guys, just cover a couple of these guys, maybe some different greenery, and, you know, we'll have this here, and then we'll have some little greenery here and there. Okay, guys, I was just cutting some greenery, I thought, maybe some vellum and some cardstock, but it looks really pretty with just vellum, so I think that's what I'll do, and again, I mean, it cuts really easily in your marquee. So, that's what I'll have, so I cut out six of them, but let me get some dimensionals behind this guy and then we'll tuck these behind to there so I'm just gonna put some dimensionals on this and I'll be right back. I have some dimensionals back here I did place them wherever I thought I need them so generally if I'm gonna tuck something behind it I always think about that first but what I'll do is just place this down don't really push it down yet and then um, just kind of tuck those little flowers there I think that looks pretty good maybe a little higher up there I haven't really pushed anything down yet and I'm just going to get some glue on the very back of these guys. So just kind of down here where it's not going to be showing too much. And just kind of have that one there. Oh, this one's delicate. <laughs> Quite delicate. Actually, you know what? I'll tuck that one away. I cut the bottom part off of it. So let's put that one here. And then this guy, like one that's <laughs> more complete down the center there. A little something like that, and I'm gonna do the same thing down over here, just have some tucked in here, okay? Okay, guys, do the same thing, just exactly the same two in the back, and then one kind of on top 
sticking out a little bit further. And now I can squish all these and I shall turn it over and give it a good squish from the back. And there is our beautiful card with that uh, airbrush background, you know, just a little bit of color here and there with the same markers. Have a lovely day and just a little something extra with the greenery. So thanks for watching, guys. Thank you so much, Dime Press for sending these items for review. I'll have images coming up. I'll have the links in the description box. And I will see you all at the next one. Bye now.